This is going to be a short demo game of the mechanics of Advanced Song of Blades and Heroes. Now, uh, Advanced Song of Blades and Heroes is based on a Song of Blades and Heroes and is a small skirmish game with some very interesting uh, mechanics and, and the way it works. So, when you want to play the game, typically you will assemble two warbands. Now you can see here, I have an undead warband consisting of three skeletons and a ghoul. And this skeleton has a shield. Um, and on this side I have got three dwarves, uh, two um, impressive dwarves, one berserker, one uh, elite ranger, and then just a regular dwarf warrior over there. Now, um, typically the, the, the games will be around 400 points. This is 150 points on each side. Um, so this dwarf ranger over here is particularly costly, it's, it's almost 100 points. Um, conversely, this skeleton is around 35 points. You can get much lower value, so, you know, rat men or um, swarms, dogs and so on, they're, they're, they're a couple of points each. Now, the game is unique in the way that it plays. You first deploy the terrain, and the very first time you want to, to start playing, you roll for initiative, and that dictates who starts first. So, in this case, I'll roll a dice for the skeletons, a one, and then for the dwarves, a six. So the dwarves will go first. Now, the way that models activate in this game is uh, it's kind of flexible. You're never sure what exactly is going to happen. So you have the option of rolling one, two, or three dice to perform as many actions as you have successes. So for example, I could say um, this dwarf is going to attempt to perform two actions and then roll two dice. Now, the statistic that you roll against is one of the only two in the whole game. Each miniature only has two stats, one of which is quality and one is combat. So you are rolling under the quality of your particular model and the successes will allow you to perform those actions. Now, you might think, well, why wouldn't I just roll three dice for every single model with the, a chance to get as many successes as possible? And the risk there is that for every single failure that you have, it allows your opponent to activate the model with, their, with the one dice, one action. Now, if you roll two failures, then it actually turns the game turn over. So whoever you had left to activate, who you didn't get around to, they simply stay there and they, you know, they're, they're ducking and weaving and hiding or crying or, or running around as they would, but you don't get to influence their action and it changes to the opposing, opposing person's turn. So right now, for example, uh, I'll start with the dwarves and I will have this ranger, who's my hero uh, for the, the dwarves, um, perform two actions. Now, uh, I don't need to declare what those actions will be ahead of time. I just need to say that I'm going to perform two. And I'll check his quality. The quality of the uh, heroic ranger is, is three. So you have to roll three or over, sorry, not, not three or under. So a double six means two successes, so I don't need to measure anything. Now, the way that units are differentiated in this, when you've only got two statistics, um, you might think that it would be very generic, but in fact, the way that units are, are made unique is by a system of traits. Now, those traits typically involve uh, allowing you to perform a standard action that you couldn't otherwise perform. Maybe it gives you a bonus two or a penalty for one of the two statistics in certain circumstances. So, for example, the, the Dwarf Ranger has got a number of um, traits. Uh, all dwarves have a thing called short move. Now, ranges in this game are one of three. So you have your short range, which is three inches, your medium range is five, and your long range is eight. So the dwarves have got a short move, so that will be three inches, so I'll move him to here. And there's a 360 degree view, there's no um, no limitation on, on, on line of sight other than uh, drawing line of sight through obstacles and objectives. So this guy has got a crossbow and the crossbow has got a um, a range of two long. Well, it's, it's got a range of up to, to three long. 
Um, within the first bracket, it's got a plus one to his combat score. Um, within two long ranges, it's it's flat. And so that's this skeleton over here is going to be um, within the two long range band, which means no bonuses, no penalties. And he has a combat rating of four. So I'll just roll a dice for him. So he's got six plus four, so he's got a total of ten. Uh, a skeleton has got a combat rating of two. Now, it's fairly certain that he's going to be unable to do anything. So he couldn't possibly block that blow. But now the, um, the effect of that is, at least initially, because the, the, the difference wasn't so great. If, there was, uh, if you double, if the attacker doubles the defender, then it's, it's out of action. If it triples, it's some kind of gruesome kill. But here we're actually quite close. We had 10 to 7. So there's a difference of only three. So the based on this six, you can see that, if you just excuse me to refer. Alright. Because this was an even number, it knocks this model prone. Which essentially stands them on their back. Now prone models are uh, in combat, for example, are very um, susceptible to being killed. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a one stage before they're dead. So there, are, there isn't a wound system per se. There are some traits which allow models to never be knocked down or never be made prone or um, to be able to recover automatically, things like that. And that's how you get resilience rather than having wounds to keep track of. So this was two activations, two successes. Now, I'm going to activate the Berserker. Now, one of the traits of the Berserker is he has to activate with three dice every single time I activate him, unless I fail on all three, or he loses his first round of combat. So, his, I'll check his quality. I think his quality is uh, the same. I think it's also three. Yeah, his quality is three, so I need three up on all dice. So I've got two successes and one failure. Now, the one failure will allow me to perform an action with this group. So I'm actually going to stand this model up with that dice. And with these two, he has to, he must, as a berserker, move as fast as possible towards the nearest enemy. So that will be two short moves, so that will be six inches in total, which will put him about there. Now that wasn't enough to turn the turnover, so I've got my last dwarf here. Now this is just a bog standard dwarf with almost nothing to speak for other than uh, something to hit people with. So since I know that the turn is going to turn over anyway, I will roll with three dice needing threes. Now that triple one means that uh, it now turns to the uh, the opposing turn. Now. The skeletons here aren't that great. They don't have any ranged attacks. My The likelihood of me being able to um, do anything meaningful to this berserker is relatively small, but I'll, I'll do them anyway. So the, the first thing that's going to happen is the skeleton warrior uh, furthest away is going to activate. Now, I know that I can bring him into combat. But I need to have an action to actually attack. So I need to roll two. I could I could choose to not roll and just take one action, which would bring him into combat, but I need two, I need one to hit. Um, there's a trait that allows you to get your free action uh, when you move into combat for the first time, which is effectively like a charge bonus. Um, but it's unique, so skeletons unsurprisingly don't get that. So I'll move him into combat with two dice. So <laughs> that's quite successful, I think. The, the quality in the skeleton is also three, so I'll move him. He, his move is a is a normal normal move, so he would have a five inch move. Now the game requests or suggests that units be in base to base combat. Now base to base uh, contact for combat. Now I don't I don't think that's really in line with how games are played these days. So I'm treating it as you know half an inch around there there in combat. So. That first one was his move, now the second one is his, his attack. Now his combat is two, and the Berserker's combat is four. So unlike this 
here where the best a skeleton could hope for would be to not die, over here they can actually fight each other. So skeleton plus two is four, and now dwarf plus four is two, so six. Now, as an even, uh, as, as an even roll that beats this roll, the, this skeleton will be knocked prone. Now, you might think this is, this is really bad, but happily, we have more involved. And as long as the turn doesn't turn over, I'm going to be able to keep uh, bundling in on this, this Berserker. So, um, right now, I'm actually going to charge my, um, my Ghoul in. Because my Ghoul will get a... Um, he has poison, which means that uh, any time um, I inflict a wound... Or inflict damage. I can I can reduce the quality of an opponent, <clears throat> and he'll get a uh, the, the berserker will get a penalty for being in combat with more than one person here. In fact, I may do the him last. I think he's got the yeah he's definitely got the highest stats. So I'm going to bring the second uh, skeleton in. That's one success. So that just brings him into base to base, but he can't he can't fight. And then the this this failure. Um, can be used by this team here, and with him, I'm going to move this Berserker, his short move, over this fence. That's his. And now I have two more units left. I am going to um, move this guy. I'm going to attempt to move him, uh, move him into combat, because although he is he's better in combat, he's actually a worse quality troop. So. I'm going to need fours, so I'll try and, and double. Yeah, I'm going to take that as a success. So he's going to move his five inches, which will, which will put him into combat now. That was the one, and now the second is the combat. Now, the, now there are three units in base-to-base -base with this Berserker. He's going to get minus one, minus two in this combat. So he's going to be at plus two, because he's a combat score of four, minus two he's going to be at a combat three. So first the Berserker, plus two, six, and the Ghoul, ah, this like, that's, uh, the Ghoul has nine. So he's beaten him, he hasn't quite doubled him. Now um, he will knock him prone with this six, and I will roll to see if he gets poisoned, and he doesn't get poisoned. Now, I know the turn is going to turn over, so I may as well uh, use three dice for my last my last guy. Um, so he's quality three, and now we'll try and do three moves. And all three succeed. So he can actually move 15 inches. Well, it's, it'd be five, plus five again. Uh, that, that won't get him into, into close combat. Maybe over here. So you, your local, your your models don't block movement or line of sight, but the enemies do. I am going to move him. I'm going to move him here, and we're going to assume that this is blocking terrain here. So, so there's no line of sight between these two. That's the end of the skeleton turn two. So now it turns over automatically to the dwarf turn. Now. The the dwarf is gonna is gonna have some some issues now. The dwarf has has lost his first combat, so now he's no longer berserk. I and mean, he's pretty good if he can do any damage, but none so far. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot into combat. Now the normally you'd randomize hits, but one of the traits that the the dwarf ranger has he's got five in total. One is a crossbow. Two is a hero, which means he always gets one successful activation. Um, one is he can re-roll one dice per game. Um, one is he gets plus one on all ranged attacks. And the last one is that he has no chance of hitting the wrong target in when he's shooting into melee. So he is going to attempt to shoot that ghoul, because it's quite dangerous to have those three there. Um, but first, I need to, need to roll the dice. He's going to get his one activation, his hero activation for free. And I, I think... It actually is in addition to this, so he could get four in total, but I'll, I'll just take it as, as one. And the remainder, um, he's going to roll four. So he gets one failure and one success. So with these two, this here, sorry, 
I would be able to to activate a unit. So I'm going to stand up this this guy. And if you're wondering why this guy being prone still counted as a penalty for the berserker in the last round of combat, it's because when he's on the ground, he's holding onto the guy's legs, or he's um, you know the guy's blade is stuck in him, and so on. It's not he's not participating in fighting back, but he's influencing it. So that was that one there. Now these two, um, I'm going to perform a a char uh, an aimed shot. So typically a, a hit is one action, but both melee and range have the option of spending two dice, and you essentially have a penalty. The the the, the target receives a penalty. So I will be using a an aimed shot with this against him. So he is within. Eight inches, so he'll be at plus one to hit, and he also will be. Um, he has the um, the good shot, which gives him plus one to ranged attacks as well. So he's had a combat of four. So he's going to actually have a combat of five with the plus one for there, and that's I think and eight and six, plus six. For the for being in the first range band, so um, he's going to get dice plus six, eleven, and the ghoul is going to have uh, dice plus three. Uh, well, it's not too bad, right? It's only it's eleven versus nine, so he will actually be knocked because this is odd. He'll be knocked back, depending on which what dice was rolled. Um, when the, the unit is beaten in combat, it depends on whether they get knocked down or prone. So evens is knocked down, and uh, or prone, sorry, and odds is knocked back. So he'll just get knocked back. He's knocked out of combat. Now, that was the activation for there. Now, this dwarf, I'm actually gonna activate the Berserker now, um, and I'm gonna choose to activate on Two dice, three dice, needing threes. So that's three three successful activations. So one to stand up, and then oh, I forgot to mention that the aimed shot would have had a penalty on this guy. So uh, that was why I spent two dice. So that would have given him a minus one, but that's still not enough to double the result. So it didn't make much difference. So here. <clears throat> the first success was to stand up. The second success will be a power blow against the uh, zombie with the shield. So he will be at. Um, if I just have a look. Right. So essentially, um, he's combat four versus combat two. And if he gets a six, then he can either take the guy out immediately or break his shield. So first the dwarf, plus four, six in total. Now a skeleton, six in total, it's a draw, nothing happens. And now the dwarf warrior over here is going to activate three times, needing threes. Okay, it's two activations successfully and one not. So the first thing he's going to do is this guy's going to move. Now the dwarf is going to activate with his two. He hasn't got any ranged attacks, so he's just going to move in six to become into close combat to lock that guy in. Now that is the end of the dwarf turn. Now it turns over to the the undead turn. So the first thing the undead's going to do is attempt to activate this guy with three actions needing threes. Now the first thing that can happen is the opponent can take an action. So he will attempt to shoot. He's going to get plus two to hit with his combat of four. So, so he's on nine. And the enemy is going to have, or the undead here, sorry, is going to have um, d6 plus 2. So he's on 7. So no no, no big drama, but um, he is now knocked back an inch. Now, these two activations probably would have been enough to get him into combat. I mean, we did say half an inch, didn't we? Yeah, I'm going to say he's in range. So that was the first of the two. And the second one is the combat. Now, the... Ranger doesn't get his crazy plus one, so he only gets, because um, because of his sure shot, so he gets plus four, and the skeleton gets plus two. So the ranger first, six, and the skeleton, six as well. Nothing happens. Okay, now over here, 
I'm going to activate the... Uh, yeah, this guy, was this guy not back now? He was just stood up. I'm going to activate the ghoul and charge him in. Well, I activate him first with three dice. Yeah, no, because because his quality is worse. If I if I mess it up, then I'm not going to be able to attack with these guys. So the first thing that's going to happen is the skeleton with the shield is going to attack the regular dwarf. So the regular dwarf has got a quality of three and combat of two. So he's actually exactly the same as the skeleton. Threes and twos. So the dwarf um, has a total of five, and the skeleton has a total of five. Um, the, there's no outnumbering here since they're both they both got equal amounts of people, um, and that is it. Yeah. Okay. So now this normal skeleton is going to attempt to attack the regular guy as well. So uh, the dwarf on threes is on six, and the skeleton um, so twos. So that would be six total. Now the skeleton uh, eight. So he beats him, and he's an even, so he knocks him down. Now, I'm going to move in with my dwarf, uh, with my <laughs> with my ghoul, um, with two activations. Uh, one success, so that just moves him in. So that failure then allows me to activate, or allows the dwarf player to activate, um, and he will have the berserker attack the, the armoured skeleton. Um, so Berserker gets plus four, he's on six, and the armor skeleton gets plus two, he's on seven. So the armor skeleton actually beats the dwarf and knocks him back an inch, knocks him out of combat. Now that is the end of the skeleton turn. Now back to the dwarf turn. So the dwarf player is going to. Activate the the dudes laying down because that it's important that they lay down. If they if they stay prone for too long, then the likelihood is that they will they will be damaged. Yeah, any successful win against a prone opponent is instant, an instant kill. So the dwarf player will um, two acti attempt two activations with the regular dwarf, and one failed. So before we resolve this. Now the ghoul is going to attack the um, attack the regular dwarf. So the dwarf has a combat of two, so a total of four, and the ghoul has a combat of three for a total of five. Now normally that would just knock them down or something, but because he's prone, that means he's dead. Now the ghoul has a trait called greedy, which um, essentially means that he's going to be feasting on that corpse. Um, if I roll a five or a six, <laughs> yep. So he is going to be feasting on that that corpse, um, and has to spend an action to not be doing that anymore. And this guy, whose 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 turn it was, doesn't get to activate at all. So now the uh, the berserker will attempt to to charge. This guy isn't prone, so he'll get to fight back as normal. Um, He just can't activate now unless I spend an action to stop him from doing that. <clears throat> so he will charge in against the, the unarmored skeleton this time um, with three actions, needing threes. So two failures turns the turn over to the skeletons. <laughs> so it's look, looking bad for the dwarves. I thought that the, the undead were going to be creamed given the, the amount of points that are sunk into the, the dwarf side, but evidently not. So the first thing I'm going to do is stand up him with a free activation with no chance of failing. And yeah, that, before we go into the, that's basically how the game runs. Um, you have back and forth, things turning over, and essentially you start to lose uh, forces. If you triple the, the damage done by in a roll against a defender, you get a gruesome kill. Uh, and as you start to lose people, I think it's 50% of the warband, they have to start taking morale tests um, against their quality or start running away. And that's how you do it. That's the campaign game. And as the campaign goes on, you can add and remove traits and you can give equipment to people 
and it's very thematic and very simple. I've read the rules once and I played this little game just here. It's, it's, it's a great game and I'd really suggest that you check it out.